Hello, Pastor Deborah here. And how are you today? Oh, I'm doing good. Been through some storms and some late nights, but I'm okay. Yes, down here in the Gulf Coast of Florida, next to Mobile and New Orleans, we get a lot of storms that come from the west. We get what I call the tail of the dragon. But I have a shield mighty protector over me. His name is General Light. He watches over the storms. He makes sure that there's no lightning that touches the house or a tree. Puts a shield of protection around my house. We've been pretty safe from all the storms. We get the tail, but it doesn't hurt us. So welcome again to another wonderful episode of this podcast here on YouTube and YouTube music. And the title of it is Love is Here Podcast Show. A voice of light in the darkness with me, Pastor Deborah. I'm working steadily to help you come out of your darkness, to loosen your shackles of oppression, and for you to be able to step out of your jail cells of ignorance and come into the light and feel the touches and the warmth of agape love. And it's light, it's truth, it's justice, it's righteousness. And that you will learn how to live in its kingdom within you, within your spirit. And then to expand that out to the territory called the soul, your helpmate. And then out through your physical body, out into the natural world, so others may see and benefit from your kingdom within. So here on this episode, episode number 15 of the Love Is Here podcast show, we're still working through the powerful spiritual teaching lessons of the oppressed spirit. I hope you've been taking notes and writing down and looking up the words, doing your own personal study. I'm a master teacher, and you are a spiritual disciple, and we're in class. We're going to begin this episode with a few more true stories, letters, poems that were written to me when I was known as Pastor Jan, before Pastor Jan passed away, and Pastor Deborah arose, rebirthed, and reincarnated, so to speak, within myself. These were people I was working with who came against me from the, from the kingdom of darkness. They were Satan's ministers, Satan's high kings and queens. They were Satan's generals to come against me, for I had become a powerful force out there in the darkness. A voice of light, hands of softness and tenderness, words of love truth and freedom was coming to them. Earthquakes were happening. People's lives spiritually were being touched. They were being delivered, set free from their oppression. Their multiple personalities were all receiving this light, these words, this voice of light in their darkness. And so they wrote to me, and I'm going to read a couple of their stories to you. And then we're going to get into the next part, part number six of the oppressed spirit that we have been working through teaching on to help you on the inside, you, the forever person who is spiritually held in darkness, ignorance, held by chains of fear, intimidation, through words, culture, religion, government, politics, ancestors. 
by a kingdom that is unknown to you. So we are here to set the captives free. That means you. So let's begin first in this episode number 15 with a story. It's not really a story. It's more like a poem. You don't understand that a lot of people in the darkness, whether they are musicians, actors, actresses, Average day people, they write, they think, they create music, they make paintings, they write stories, plays. They're trying every way they know how to silently sort of speak about themselves. They want you to know that they are there in the darkness. They can't tell you directly. I've been given the gift of discerning of spirits. So I can see into the realm of the spirit. I can peer and see and hear them spiritually. But I also look at their nonverbal communication. Maybe they paint their fingernails black. They color their hair. They transform themselves from one sex to another sex. Maybe they're in therapy. Maybe they sing songs out there. They do horrible things to people. They're speaking, but most people are not looking. They're in gangs. They do evil, wicked things to other people, to animals. Oh, but they're also in leadership. Politicians, kings, crown princesses, lords. (laughs) They're prime ministers. They're policemen, school teachers, college professors. Just plain old. Moms and dads, aunts and uncles. Maybe they're a pastor, a minister, a religious leader. They are everywhere, and they are everyone. I had to learn that, and it took me a while. And when I started reaching out through prayer and ministry, I met some people, and one of them, I'm going to read their poem to you that they wrote to me so you can understand about the hearts and minds of people in the darkness. This was written by a precious young lady. Her name was Amanda. She became my spiritual daughter on October the 9th, 1998 at the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida. She came to the altar and I told her she could come out of the darkness. I didn't know at that time she'd been sent in to get close to me so she could take me out and stop praying and loving the Satanists, the witches, those in heavy metal music, those in the LGBTQI community, the gangs, the drug lords, all those that served Satan and his kingdom. So listen to her poem. It's entitled, Wishes that won't come true. Suicidal dreams. This was written by a precious young lady who is mine and still is today, spiritual daughter, and who is born again, that was baptized in water and in the Holy Spirit. This young lady wrote to express herself at the loss of her husband, whose name was Owen, and a child in a satanic ritual abuse sacrifice. I had to learn how to listen to their cries, learn about their life, learn about what goes on in the darkness. I had to understand, see, believe about child sacrifice, blood and urine drinks, demonic spirits, fires. I had to watch a lot of movies, read a lot of true stories, and understand their world. This young lady, Miss Amanda, and her husband, Owl, and her child were at the time multi-generational Satanists who had been unable to escape to physical freedom. Her desire is for others to hear the silent cries of all in the darkness of Satanism. For they did not choose this willingly, but were born into it and have to survive physical 
sexual, emotional, and spiritual abuse, torture, and captivity. Because of God's great mercy and love, all were born again. In the name of Christ Jesus, they all went through the cross experience and became children of the Most High God. And they are my spiritual children. This was June 2001. Tonight, I saw Satan glaring and staring at me through the eyes of the rats running across my bedroom floor. I was lying on the bed thinking about death. How wonderful it would be if I could be dead. It's something I think about 24-7. It rings in my head. Oh, how great it would be if I could be dead. Seems no one would miss me, not even come and cut me down from the rope I'm swinging from, from the bullet in my head. I feel so deserted, so discouraged, so depressed. I think about my wasted life and the positions wasted on me. What's the point? I'm taking another breath. I ask myself a question, but I can't hear anything. There's too much noise blaring in my head. I see your pretty face smashed against the bathroom wall. What a disgrace. Now who should I feel sorry for? Myself? To me? There is no point of breathing, of eating, of living anymore. This God has left me a bleeding corpse. Do all his, do all his bidding, give, giving without an ending. The only thing left is the ending of my life. If you even want to call it that, all this fighting, all the screaming, ringing in my ears. The demons are gripping, pulling at my neck, drooling, ready to bite down. Go ahead, die a painless death. All the flowers are wilted, turned gray from the smoke. They roll dice on how I should die. I don't care just wish it was over. They're haunting me. They're hating me. They're wanting me. They're killing me. Don't know how to finish, so I'll just leave you hanging like me. Amanda did survive many deaths, many suicide attempts, and she's still here. She has her mental health issues, She's been locked up in state mental health hospitals. She's been arrested. She's been to jail, been to prison, lived down the streets, been homeless. But through it all, she has stayed faithful, even though she's wavered to Christ and to me. And I've never left her. I'm always there praying for her, her family members, her children. And she is still there and will be in heaven when her time is up. Amanda wrote me another story. She was a prolific writer. She was also a singer with a heavy metal music group. She had a beautiful voice. She was a very beautiful girl when I met her when she was just 14. Her story is written here, a little bit of it, and I'll read it to you. It's called My Life. It was written by Miss Amanda, a born again multi-generational Satanist who could not get out to freedom fully and this was in February 2001 I live in a world where all my emotions collide from one to another anger 
into rage. Rage to shame. Shame to torment. Torment to fear. Fear to lust. Lust to hate. Hate to suicide. Suicide to sadness. Sadness to crash. Crash every day. It's like this. There are demonic spirits all around me and in me. I am totally messed up. But I hear this voice inside me telling me it's okay. I always take things to extremes because the only way to survive my world is by playing in this game. See, I am a Satanist, but not one who just goes by the cute little name. I didn't just wake up one day and say, Hey, I think I'll go and join a coven and start breeding babies for the devil. Nope. I was born into this world, the daughter of a satanic high priest. My entire bloodline comes from a satanic life originated in Babylon. I have been chosen to birth a chosen child for Satan. Can't sleep. Can't eat. Can't live a normal life. Can't work. Can't go to school. Held captive in my own house. Satanism is my life. I breed babies and sacrifice them to a God that hates my guts. See, I know. I can see right through you. I can see your disbelief. That is why he has no, that is why he has so much power. Amanda was speaking to the righteous religious people here. And you Christians are laying down defeated. See, I am the chosen one. As my great-grandmother lay dying, she told me of my future. A savior would come to me, and together she and I, happened to be Pastor Deborah, would snatch these beautiful souls out of Satan's reach. See, this lady is a part of me, and through her God, I have found peace. Now, I am not out physically yet, but maybe someday that can be. But I will risk my life to see people in the darkness set free. I have taken brutal beatings, been raped by both men and women, seen murders and abortions, helped kill babies, men and women who would not obey, cut my skin with knives, because the agony does not go away till I reach the high place. Self-mutilization and disassociation is how we all survive. It's not all fun and games. You tend to learn that once it's all too late. Once you are in, you're in. There is no escape. And then, all of a sudden, a light pokes through your world. A short little old lady says she has found the way. So you try her. You fight her. You lie to her. You test her. You find out she is for real. And then you hold on to her. You do not let go of her. Still, you cannot explain this love for her. Everybody thinks you are crazy. And yet, you never let go. She brings truth to the lies. And peace to your soul. She represents a God I never knew. Why would somebody die for me after all the things I have done? I'm only 17. 
and there are millions out there, just like me, unseen, unheard, and waiting, hoping for someone to help them too. Will it be you? Are you strong enough to face the powers of hell? Satan has called me a Judas to him. I humiliate Satan in front of his people. I have paid the price and still am paying for my decision to follow Jesus Christ. I will not rest until my family is saved, all Satanists and witches saved, and set free from their torment. Love set me free. It is a day-by-day fight, and that is all I have to say. Manda wrote so much, and you'll hear many of them. I have others, true stories of people coming out of the darkness, true personal experience in helping them find deliverance and healing and stepping out into the light. My life was different. I was educated by the Holy Spirit himself. I read books, watched movies, had personal experience. For years I talked very little to anybody. I learned, I cried, I prayed. I went out into the spirit realm. God was with me, helping me, guiding me. I was tested and tried by Satan many times. And during the test, Satan was active, powerful, and God was silent. When you take a test with God, he does not talk to you. He watches, he listens, and he sees your heart, your motives, your desires, and what you say and do, even your spirit in your sleep. So I became a spiritual mother to those like Amanda, so I could turn their hearts unto the Lord. And that was my heart's desires. Then I had to learn his heart's desires. And we'll get to that maybe in the next episode. It's Isaiah 60, 61, and 62. I had to learn about this love of this father for Amanda. And in this next poem, from Amanda's biological father, who she didn't know it was, she believed it was just a friend or an uncle, but it was her biological father named Isaac. Oh, Isaac was not his real name, but He was Amanda's mother's brother. And in Satanism and in the kingdom of darkness, incest, bloodlines were all vital and important. You learn that when you start watching a lot of historical dramas of kings and empires and how to be the emperor, you had to marry within a bloodline. And you had to marry cousins, brothers, sisters, relatives. It was all vital. Manda was a part of the Illuminati, the international group. Her family of the Black Forest clan out of Germany sat in the number three position. Her family was to bring forth eventually what we would call the false, a false prophet that would be there and stand and help the Antichrist spirit when he came onto the planet. So I had to study all of that to learn. Was this true? Was this at work? I watched movies, read books, studied. Amanda was in a powerful position and her husband that she was betrothed to, Isaac, who she had had several children with and who I met who was going to be the next king of the clan, his name was Hans. He, was, at the time I met her, was living in England under a powerful lord. And he was a direct descendant of Amanda and her father, Isaac. Isaac finally got touched, and he was a powerful satanic program of children. I had to learn about mind control, Programming. I had to learn about the CIA Monarch Mind Control Program and the formula that was used to control people who would become, as you would call them, Manchurian 
candidates. I had to understand slavery, mind control, drugs, and how programming controlled the mind. How was it done? Isaac was a programmer, and he was a drug dealer. He worked in the underworld, the drug cartels. He was a heavy metal music singer. He was a good-looking young man. He also was a real estate person. He went to college, the very one that Pastor Jan went to, Troy State University in Troy, Alabama. Didn't know it when Jan lived in Montgomery, Alabama. They were there also. Was that coincidence? Don't know. Didn't ever meet him. But Amanda actually went to the same elementary school, Dalreda Elementary School, that Jan went to. Isaac and his best friend, Victor, who was a satanic high priest, a high chief of the Cherokee Nation, he went to Troy. They were business people. They were smart, intelligent. Oh, they all had multiple personalities, dark side parts, light side parts. They were all bisexual, homosexual, transgender. They all put on different disguises at different times. And I met them all. It was strange, but I couldn't meet them personally. It was forbidden. But I could meet Amanda. She was allowed to come out and meet me and talk with me. So here in this next story called Love is Here, which is exactly what this podcast and this ministry has been has been named after, came after this poem that was written by Isaac and Amanda to me. So let me read it to you before we get into the next part of the oppressed spirit. Love is Here it was written by two wonderful children of God. That was Amanda and Isaac. Both were born into the life of multi-generational Satanism. Both have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. They have renounced Satan. They have been baptized in water and are doing their best to follow Christ Jesus. Both are still trapped in the life of Satanism and are unable to get to freedom yet. This poem was written after one of them was saved in October 2000. That was Isaac. I think it was put to music and maybe became a song for others to learn that love can touch and love can heal. And both of these children, Isaac and Amanda, are my spiritual children. Isaac's in heaven now. Amanda is still here. So listen, this was written in October 2000. My people we will all live. Nowhere man, nowhere mind. In your truth, there is, n- there is nowhere to hide. Looking out, looking in, looking round to where you have been. Inside out, outside in. You will find It's all unreal. We can't talk. We can't touch. We can feel. It's all too much. We will wait for love to heal us. We will learn that love is here. Nowhere man, nowhere mind. In your truth, there is nowhere to hide, looking out, looking in, looking round to where you have been. We will wait for love to heal us. We will learn that love is here. We will know that love can touch us. We will see that love, that love is here by Isaac and Amanda. They had discovered that love was there in their life and it could do. They couldn't talk to others about it. They couldn't really touch me. Isaac could never come out and meet me personally. He was so afraid. 
afraid of retaliation and abuse. He got in trouble so many times. You'll hear those stories. It took a long time, patience, love at work in their lives. Now let's pick up in part number six of the oppressed spirit. These poems to Pastor Chan at the time were to help me understand them, their world, their minds. And then when I did the story, this inspirational teaching from Dr. Miles Monroe of the Bahamas Faith Ministries, he taught a lot about the oppressed spirit. You can find him out on YouTube. He is in heaven now. And his Bahamas Faith Ministries is still going on through his son and daughter. I think it's called Monroe Global. He was a fabulous teacher of the kingdom of heaven and how we humans were ignorant kings. He taught about prayer, spiritual things, kingdoms, and I learned a lot. I spent years with him, read all of his books, and I'm sure they're still out there. It was a powerful time of teaching of kingdoms. I had to learn about kingdoms, about kings, about their hearts, I had to learn about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of darkness, the kings. I had to watch movies about kings and empires. And I'm still doing that today. I'm watching Chinese historical dramas about the emperors and the empires of China. I've watched stories about the kings of Europe, watched movies about the Caesars of Rome, watched movies about ancient gods and goddesses heroes and kings and saviors. Study, study, study. Dictionaries, study, read, watched, and still do today. I'm still learning, and I have much to learn. But here in this teaching of the oppressed spirit, in this podcast, I want you to learn a little bit. So let's pick up in this part, number six, the oppressed spirit. Everyone that is living under oppression, as Isaac and Amanda, and probably you too, and your children, and even nature, the climate. Did you know the climate is being oppressed by the kingdom of darkness and being used against you? And do you know why that occurred? That occurred because long, long ago, one of our humanity's ancestors named Cain, killed his own brother, Abel, out of hate, envy, and jealousy, because Abel's sacrifice of a little lamb was accepted by God, and Cain's sacrifice of fruits and vegetables was not. Cain was jealous, envious, and he lured his brother, Abel, out into a field and hit him with a rock, killed him. And from that day forward, that was the first human that was ever killed by his brother on the planet. His blood spilt into the earth, and the earth rose up and said to Cain, Because you have killed your brother and spilt his blood, us, the earth, nature, the climate, we curse you. We will not bring forth our bountiful blessings unto you. You will be an enemy unto us. We will do battle against you. We will turn against you. We are no longer to be a slave and a servant to you. We will serve another death. So nature itself and climate came under the hands of Satan, the kingdom of darkness. Many of you don't understand all these storms. You don't understand the climate. You don't pray for it. You don't understand its purpose, its resources, what it is to do with us. And did you know that one day, soon, whenever soon is, this earth that we are on will be folded up as an old garment. It will probably blow up if The sun, as we know, is slowly dying. It may explode. And this earth, as we know it, will be gone. Maybe even this whole solar system. And there will be a new place for humanity to go. That's way in the future. But for now, just know that the climate is against you. 
unless you become a king of the kingdom of heaven and you have risen up to help it and to free it for it is subjected to Satan and its evil ways and to death and to be a curse unto us humanity. I have a story called Dr. Doolittle in Narnia that taught me that when you pray for the earth, the animals, the culture, the water, the air, and you pray and your heart cries out to God to help it, you become a king and a priest unto the Lord for the earth, for the climate, for the weather, for the animals. They will rise up and they will recognize you as a spiritual king that they are to serve and help. You still have to do battle. There's many times I must tell Satan and his many of demonic spirits, they cannot touch my house, my yard. I tell the thunder and the lightning what it's to do, that it does not have to serve Satan anymore. I'm here, the king from the kingdom of heaven. So you study, you learn, and you too will come to know many things that have been hidden from you. So let's keep continue with the oppressed spirit. So everyone that is living under oppression, like I said, that includes the climate, and has had their spirit broken, their will has surrendered to the oppressors. In many cases, the climate has a spirit itself, and it has had to surrender to death, to the controller of death, and is no longer under your hands, and has surrendered to the oppressors, and has to spiritually discover their true God, their true king, and recreate themselves. The weather has to recognize you as king, and that they are to serve you. You have to be slowly recognized as a king. You must discover that yourself within you. You, the oppressed spirit, must get free. Deliverance must occur. Healing must occur. Growth must occur. You have to spiritually discover your true God self your recreated self, the true you, who you are to serve, whose image and likeness you were originally created to be. But the oppressors, the lords, the masters, the controllers will say to you, do what I say. Vote the way I tell you to vote. Do what I pass in law. But one who is a true leader, a king, and is free of oppression, may say to others, Come on, let's go. Follow me. The freed spiritual heart and mind, and the will from being oppressed, can lead others into the unknown. A life not under oppression. A life healed of its broken will. A life healed of its broken spirit. A life without oppression. Many of those people are called heroes, leaders, generals. They are healers also, deliverers of the people. And the people follow them, just like Amanda and Isaac followed Jan. A Jan had to be tough. Pastor Deborah's tougher. I had to stand against Satan himself. I had to go spiritually to satanic meetings, stand and fight, stop the flames, bind the demons. I had to set captives free. You'll hear about that in stories about airplanes going into dungeons, setting prisoners free, stopping knives from coming down. Powerful stories that out in the realm of the darkness and the spirit realm became reality. One who has been freed 
and healed of oppression has been has had and has taken their own will back has had a personal vision of this freed life this unknown self and knows where and how to get there follow pastor deborah follow others follow a road you've never walked on go towards the light go towards the light follow the voice go into unknown lands follow your heart this newly freed man forever person even with its many dark side parts and multiple personalities there's a core in there a baby a child that's been looking and searching living in trances hypnotic states frozen in time but it will hear the voice of love it will feel the touch as Isaac did and Amanda did and they will follow it and learn about it watch it and see that love is here and love can heal them the newly freed man has battled and won thrown off the oppressors the shackles the chains the fetters climbed up out of the pit out of a cell out of a box out of a cage you can learn about what that looks like in the matrix movie in night from 1999 with neo morpheus and trinity and learn about oppression slavery mind control and how one has to get free and how morpheus and trinity visited neo in his dreams over a computer but neo did not know that he was held captive Morpheus knew, Trinity knew. And they went about into the darkness of the machine's created world for the mind to set it captive free. That it was a story of Pastor Deborah and Isaac and Amanda. You go watch those trilogies, learn about oppression and slavery, freedom, beliefs and concepts, and how love worked. out in the realm of the darkness when one becomes free spiritually mentally and emotionally and has destroyed them and has been delivered of all the control mechanisms the matrix the ideas the concepts the fears the thoughts the multiple personalities the dark side the demons of the rules and the police of the oppressors A free man now can become the true spiritual self that the God the most high the creator of agape love himself has said they are to be a freed spiritual forever person becomes a self-starter self-disciplined undeterred by others and will go life alone will travel, study, learn. Won't even go and do what all of their friends do. Instead of going to ball games, concerts, parades, it will stay at home and study, it. watch a movie, learn, take notes, grow. I even watch gaming movies and learn. I'm looking about kingship, rulership, spells, witchcraft, ancient history, ancestors. the dark world darkness spiritual things looking looking i look to nature i study study i write i study i write i pray i read books i'm not a normal person neither was the giver of life and love is here i had to understand the dark world i had to understand the spirit realm i had to understand the forever person I had to, had to understand about kingdoms, empires, dungeons, darkness, fetters, irons, soul ties, ancestors. I had to understand demons, demonic spirits, Satan, hearts of lust and greed and power. I had to study and still do today. Now let's continue with the oppressed spirit. 
I had to look up what the word oppressed meant out of the Webster's Dictionary and the Strong's Concordance. An oppressed spirit or people or nation. They are timid and passive. Timid is defined by Webster's Dictionary as one, lacking courage or self-confidence. Two, lacking in boldness or determination. The word passive is defined by Webster's Dictionary as one, lacking energy or will, lethargic. Two, tending not to take an active or dominant part. Three, induced by an outside agency. Four, not active or operating. Inert. You see that a lot in abused children, abused people, human traffic people. They are so traffic abused. Go watch the movie Taken. Learn about human trafficking and how the girls are treated with drugs, abuse, rape to put them in their place, put them in the oppressed spirit, spiritual condition. Learn about how oppression comes. It begins at home with parents. It begins even in the womb. I had to watch movies on human trafficking, gangs, prostitution, abuse. I had to learn that human trafficking has been going on since day one. Raping women, children, selling them into slavery. Go watch the movie Spartacus with Kurt Douglas. Understand slavery. Understand being born into that life and the desire of slaves to be free. And the power, the Romans at that time, how they fought against that. Understand slavery. Go watch the movie Pompeii. You will learn. Study ancient history of slaves and slave owners and lords, masters. Understand war, generals, taking of children and women, slaves, and the use of rape of women and men in war. Understand. Go looking. Go out on YouTube. Read books. Study. Study, study. When one becomes oppressed, passivity is the result of oppression, oppressive training, programming. It is not spiritually natural, even to an unsaved person, to be passive, dominated, controlled. When one is trained to be timid, passive, submissive, controlled, non-resistant. One's culture, family, rules, traditions, ancestors, relationships, pain from punishment has trained them, has trained one to be a passive and timid mind and spirit. Do not express oneself except when one can't take it anymore. Many people who cannot express themselves cut themselves to feel some kind of pain. They become numb to everything. And when the pain is too much, the heaviness of the oppression, suicide takes place. For they can't find their freedom, their answers. You have to study not only suicide, taking of one's life, but what's behind it? Why is there no hope? Why are they hopeless? Why is there no healing? Why is there no help? One is trained to not vent one's thoughts or feelings. We don't talk about it. Don't think about it. One of the ways an oppressed person is trained is by this. You are to be seen and not heard. This is the training of an oppressed person, a slave, a maid, a servant, not valuable people, less than human by the oppressors, both in the realm of the spirit and 
the natural world. The oppressors teach the ones to be oppressed to be seen in society. In church, but never heard. Don't speak up. Don't question. No one is to know you are even there. Only that you are even there. One is only to be manipulated, deceived, bewitched, lied to. An oppressed person is to be hidden in plain sight. Whole cultures, families, races, sexes, generations after generations of people are like this, even nations. The oppressors will say to the oppressed, How dare you question me, my authority? I pay the bills. I raised you, gave you birth. I have laid down my life for you, served you. You owe me. Amanda's mother used to do this to her. She would say, I've got the stretch marks on my body. I gave you birth. You owe me your life, your everything. You see this a lot, how emotional blackmail, kidnapping is used with children from their parents. I see that a lot in the Chinese historical movies where the children want to love freely, but the parents will not let them. You are here to do my bidding. You are here, and if you don't, you are an unloving child. And that's against the law. Learn, study. What you want is not important, the oppressors would say. Only what I want and need. I don't care about you. It's all about me. I don't want to hear your ideas, your goals, your desires, your plans, your opinions, your truths, or anything. If I or we will tell you what you need to know and what you will do. Demonic spirits have become our spiritual oppressors. They have produced people who are so passive, spiritually, timid, dependent on the oppressors who are stronger and very powerful that the passive oppressed spirit person can or will never make things happen. Isaac was a satanic programmer of children. Go watch the movie, The Manchurian Candidate, with Frank Sinatra, and there's another one with Denzel Washington. Learn how a Manchurian Candidate is created through drugs, abuse, torture, and how they keep the programming in place. Learn, study, and you will have to understand much that you do not know. They, the oppressed person, will only watch things happen. They are left out of life. No control over their own life or their circumstances. Did you know that even Amanda's ministration time was controlled so that she would ovulate and that she would become pregnant by Isaac or others. Sometimes she would become pregnant just to sacrifice the child. Sacrifice is a big word in the kingdom of darkness. You cannot show your loyalty, your love, your honor without sacrificing something you love. A part of you, maybe an animal, family member. Yeah. You want to understand how that power works? Go watch the movie, King Arthur. It's a new one. It has a wonderful story about King John, who sought dark powers. In order to gain more power, he had to sacrifice someone he loved. He sacrificed his wife to some creatures in a lake. He sacrificed his daughter. 
learn about sacrifice to the evil dark side in order to get power and authority. An oppressed spirit, an oppressed soul, and an oppressed physical body. They can only watch things happen. They are left out of life. Prostitution shows us that. You don't get to become a prostitute in a gang, high-end call girl, without having been abused and programmed by the programmers for their use. Go watch the movie Taken with Liam Nielsen. Study human trafficking, programming, it's business, it's money, it's sex, it's desire, it's lust, it's greed. Go study. Pastor Deborah did. There's no control over their own life or their circumstances. No self-confidence, only dreamers. Just living just for today, just waiting for death have given up all hope of freedom, have succumbed to their circumstances, their controllers, their oppression. But God, the Heavenly Father, who Pastor Deborah serves, wants this spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and spiritual heart and mind set free and transformed in each and every one of you and each and every child so that everyone can help the next generation of oppressed persons. Oppression begins in the womb, in infancy. It comes from your culture, your religion, your ancestors, your faith, your community, your church, your religion, your business, your aunts, your uncles, your grandmas, your grannies, your aunties. It comes from many different ways. So I hope this section of the oppressed spirit and the stories and the poems help you to begin to see and understand oppression of the spirit. This Love Is Here podcast is to help you learn that you too are oppressed. Your spirit is oppressed. You've been programmed. You are a mind-controlled slave, and you don't even know it, like Neo. You work for others, machines, people, politics, leaders, social ideas. You, an oppressed spirit, this podcast is for. Love is here is coming to you as a voice in the darkness to teach you, to love on you. So you listen, come back to the next one. And that ends this part, this episode of Love is Here, a voice in the darkness of the oppressed spirit. Don't you ever forget, I am here. I'm even in your dreams. I can see you and hear you, no matter where I'm at. You are free to come and visit and talk to me. Just watch as Isaac did. Listen, observe my life. Pay attention to me. I am not the only one out here helping you. There are others. Look for the light. But just remember, Satan can also create light. He can make images look like loving people. Test them. Try them. Ask their spirits. What master do they serve? Do they serve the God of light and love? and his son, Christ Jesus, who came to the earth, walked for 33 years, went to a cross and died and rose up out of the tomb after three days, and now sits on the right hand of his father, the king of heaven. If that spirit, human or demonic, cannot answer that question that way, they are not of the kingdom of heaven, but of the kingdom of darkness. Test us, try us, watch us, listen to us, spirit will travel. Ask God who's the real one that you are to follow, to listen to. I watch so many movies out on YouTube, read books, true stories. I don't go to concerts, 
sports things. I'm not a normal person because I have to be in the army of God. I'm a general. I've studied. I've gone to school for war and battle. I can go behind enemy lines spiritually because I've been well trained like a Navy SEAL or Army Ranger. I am special to God himself. I travel on light and love. I travel as a power of the kingdom of heaven to reach you. So you be encouraged. Help is on the way. Light has come. Love is here. Just as it came for Isaac and Amanda. Reach out and we will see you. I know where you are. I know about the dungeons. I know about the mind control. The multiple personalities. The dark side. The light side parts. I know that. I can see you in the spirit. Even in your trances. I can hear your whimpers. And so can he. So you be encouraged. Hope is come. Love is here. You listen to us out here on the YouTube podcast playlist of the Hidden Kingdoms. Here of Pastor Deborah on YouTube. Follow our YouTube shorts. And listen to us on YouTube Music. There's so much more to come. And we will keep working through many stories. Teaching you about yourself. And a God be love. A voice of light in the darkness. Okay, see you on the next episode. Should be episode number 16. And we'll cover some more stories. And pick up in the next part of the oppressed spirit. Bye. Love you. And I'll see you out there. You look for the love and the light and my voice in the darkness. Bye.